Hello everyone, welcome to a new video on our channel today. We are featuring Orbital Vmax, where we play a 4-4 line of Orbital Vmax, which is nice ability to spam one damage on every Pokemon in the field per Orbital per turn. So we can actually deal a maximum of 4 damage counters on every Pokemon per turn. And it also has a nice attack using Grass and Colors energy, dealing 50 plus 50 damage for every energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. We also have uh, Snorlax in this deck, where we can draw up to 7 cards at the end of our turn, and then our turn ends, but we can restart our hand, which is pretty useful at the beginning of our setup. And moreover, it's important that we can then play a 7 or 8 game, or 8 price card game, by using one or two Snorlax and our opponent has to knock out How do we get our orbital line out? We have a which play set of a quick ball and we also use our reset stamp stadium. where we can drop him down to one or two cards or one, two or three cards in the late game, which can help us out a lot. So how do we get our orbital line out? We have a play set of a quick ball and we also use a Turfield Stadium. This we can get out by using Gooseman Halla where we also get our U-turn boards and special energies. And we can get our Goose Montana by using Teko, where we also get our Metal Lana to heal our Orbitals and also retreat to spam even more damage on the field because we can switch into multiple Orbitals. We have four special grass energy, four capture and two weakness guard energy to deal with different matchups. And as retreat options, we have uh, two U-turn boards, for switch and also for bird keeper which also gives us the option to draw cards and switch into other orbiters i'm right now testing with a four crushing hammer in this list which can be substituted with other cards like another snorlax turfit stadium or a u-turn board but you can also um, use other cards like a tool scrapper six Sagoon, or whatever you want but I'm trying right now with the Crushing Hammer. So let's get into some games. All right, so our first match is now up. Let's see what we are up against. Okay, we have a Mulligan here. So the basic strategy of uh, Orbital is just to use uh, Snorlax in the first two turns, if possible, to draw multiple cards or more cards and set up your orbital and then spread damage by using orbital's ability. So now we have an orbital, we have pretty good hand. We have the capture the energy to search more uh, basic Pokemon. We are up against Eternatus as it seems or Spiritomb list, which is if it's just a Spiritomb would be really favorable for us. But it seems like it will most likely be Eternatus. We we'll go with a second orbital. So the good thing with turns is they won't knock us out turn one, which is advantageous for us. So we don't need Snorlax. We have already the orbital out. We can search supporters with tackle on the next turn. So a hand is pretty good at this point. I'll probably go for uh, Guzman Hala next turn and search for a U-turn board, maybe attach the energy to the other orbital to get a Snorlax out on the field. And they having a normal setup using Eternatus turn one, having a Crobat out. They're also playing Absol, which is not seen very often in Eternatus builds. You have either the uh, Sixagoon net with Hooper build or the Toxic build where you use um, Gala Slowbro and Toxic Croak or even uh, Garbodor to poison your opponent's Pokemon and then knock it out through poison. So he's going for 30, just a regular attack and attached energy on the bench. Okay, great, we top deck Snorlax, so we'll most likely go for Snorlax here. Good thing with Eternatus is that it's un it's not like ADP, they get multi not multiple prices, but we can play a 7 or even 8 prize game if we can evolve all our orbital this turn. 
So now the losing tag call for Guzma and Hala. I probably search for two now, yes. And this card, probably another Guzma and Hala. And also the weakness card energy, because this is something we don't need in, again, in this matchup. We just need it against some fire decks like us and the Scorch. Grabbing the grass, turf stadium, and U turn board. We'll then um, use uh, Turfrid Stadium to get another Orbital Remax. Evolve into Orbital, evolve into the second Orbital Remax using the ability, using Snorlax, attaching the U turn board. As a, our strategy is now to spread damage as much as possible, and next turn, if he gets the turn to Remax with a second energy, we start to hit it. We can two-shot it if we have enough damage on the board. So let's use another energy to search for another orbital. So next turn we have three orbital. So we can also retreat into one if required and still spread damage on the field with two other orbitals. We do also have Melon Lana in our deck, but it's very unfortunately for us to heal only 120, which is not enough. So they always two hit KO our orbitals. So they most likely go for a knockout here using Eternatus Remax, a full bench and probably a Sixagoon. And let's see if they can get it. As I mentioned, it depends on the build if they can get it. If if it's a poison based build with Gala Slowbro, we have the advantage of Herb Energy, so the special grass, to not get affected by special conditions. This definitely helps us against all these uh, poison builds. So he, he doesn't get it at all. He's still missing a lot of damage. We are first using obviously the ability because we want to start attacking soon. Let's get another Wemax out of the deck. Evolve. Now we go for... We can start going for an attack here can also go for a retreat first and then use another ability then still use a bird keeper to draw another three cards and use the third orbital and start attacking we we'll also have uh, obviously crushing hammer which we can substitute with other key cards in this deck this is something i'm trying out right now yeah we went for the bird keeper attaching energy now as this doesn't seem to be it Toxic build, we, we can attach the special grass, but we don't have to. So we can do 150 now. This is definitely two hit. He has a second Eternatus out already. However, if we can knock out two Eternatus, we just simply win. The Spirit Tomb also has 40 or 50 damage already. So it's knocked out next turn, so we can also go for a knockout on a Crobat or simple another return and just later on if required. Depends also on what they what they will bench later on. It doesn't seem like they have any supporter or crowbat in their hand. That's why they're just simply going to attack next turn or this turn. There is also a Hoopa that also helps us because we can now Knock out Hooper, Absol, and Spirit Tomb, and also need to one shot one Eternatus Remax. I'll go for the attack now. Uh, for the ability, sorry. Gets us the first prize card. So let's see. What is the best idea? Do we want to Melo and Lana? I'm not sure. Maybe we should just take the deck first. Right now, two of our orbitals are already damaged, so it doesn't matter if we bench another orbital. We, because then they need knockout on Snorlax, Orbital We, and the We Max, so they need boss anyway. Which is why I will probably bench the fourth orbital as well, and also to have more spread options. I think I'm just going to heal this now also to. to Get more damage on the board. I will discard the orbital. I, I think I don't need it anymore in this matchup. I will just simply keep the energies and the supporters in case he top decks research or anything. We do also have reset stamp for later. Yeah, 
if they manage to get four or even uh, four prize cards, then we can stamp them to two. Let's put another damage on the board and then probably you switch on the one that has 240 because, oh, may maybe I used the one with 120, then they can't use Absol. They need to attack with Eternatus once again. Maybe just we go for Snorlax here and draw more Bryce cards because they, then we can heal and not the orbit with 120 damage down to zero and then it will be really tough for them to get the knockout. Their only option would be to have boss now on the orbital with 120 on, but they already used some bosses order, so it's highly unlikely in his two hand cut that he has it right now. And we have a full hand again. So he didn't even attack because he he's not taking this one price. He doesn't have to. Now the question is how do we retreat? could either go for Melo and Lana and for the knockout. Let's check our deck. We have three, three switch left and two bird keeper. It was very unfortunate that we didn't draw into one of them. We don't want to play Mani either or the reset stamp because we don't want to give them a fresh hand. Question is what do we need for later? Let's decrease our hand size. Maybe start. Maybe I will let Use Man and Lana for a retreat, spread the field with the orbiters, and then attack with the orbital that has zero damage on it. We can also use the orbital that has some damage on it. Yeah. So the best idea now is to use the fresh orbital can also get a two shot on this Eternatus. He needs to attack three times now and in three times we definitely win because all of the Eternatus are... We max have a lot of damage on the field so we can get the knockouts easily. Also the Absol is almost down and we can get down the Hooper as well as soon. If, if he, he puts the Hooper in the active spot it's definitely also down. So I think at this point we definitely have won because he didn't drew into any supporter or any good cards. He, he retreated and attacking with 90. Unfortunately we don't have any Melon Lana left. But we can now go for the knockout on the Eternatus. We max with two energy, then he needs another energy in hand for his last Eternatus. And we also have boss for a game on the Hooper next turn. So this is probably the, the play I'm going for here. At this point I think we have already won the game. But we should make sure that we are not misplaying here. Yeah, I, I go for the Eternatus and now knock it out. We are at one prize and we can win now because if he's going to attack with the Eternatus, we win. If he's going to attack with the Hoopo, we win as well. So at this point it's game because we have another Orbiter set up already. Nice. Going to attack, take some prices. No, still no prices. Yeah, and now it's, it's game. He's scooped. Okay, next game is up. It looks like we are against the water deck. If I'm right, most players stick to their decks and want to have the same deck box, so also water sleeves. So I assume it's a water deck, could be in Teleon, for example. Which is now much better due to this telescopic tool card. Our starting hand is pretty good. We have Snorlax, we have Orbital. We have a doll, we can get another orbital out. We have a crashing hammer. Do we... Oh, okay. It's not Intellion, it's the Arakuda Cramorant deck that is also new due to the Wirvid Voltage release. The strategy is simple. They just want to have Cramorant inactive and bench as much Arakuda as possible 
And with the double colorless, they do 60 per Arrokuda they discard, which is a maximum of 240 damage, meaning they cannot one shot our orbitals. And we one shot their Cremorants with two energies on the orbital we max. Unfortunately, we had no energy at the beginning, so we need one more turn. He now has to discard three Arrokuda to get a knockout on this Snorlax and we don't have a backup because we are only playing two right now and I discarded the other. But we have uh, here Lily's Pokedoll which is pretty good so we can wait one turn. Seems like they are also playing Pokemon Catcher to get our Orbital early. Luckily it was Tails. Yeah and then they, they discard the Arrokuda and get him back with Nessa. And then they are able to spam 240 every turn on the active. Of course, they're also playing Oricorio and I guess also Crobats and Idenes to get some cards as backup because there's, there's a Porter is Nessa. Okay, so they whiff on Arakuda, so we have one more turn with Snorlax. I'm going to discard the Water Energy because they probably play Tapu Koko Prison to get the Lightning Energies back, and I want to avoid that at any cost right now. I go for Guzman Hala get play. I, I personally like this play. We can get the second orbital out. We can get another orbital V out by using the special energy. I guess it's, its English name is Capture Energy. Okay, so one orbital is also priced, one orbital V. But that's not a problem right now. I think we we'll just get out another one because when we have three, we can also switch and retreat and hide behind dolls and other orbital we maxes. And right now he has if we can evolve this orbital we max, we can play a seven prize game. So he def this the prize from Snorlax doesn't help him at all. And we also later on in late game can stamp him down to two if he knocked out one orbital. And now here was the Nessa play, getting two Arakuda back, attaching energy and knocking the Snorlax out. He also has to discard only one. Now we can start spamming the field with Orbitals. Thing is, our Orbitals ability doesn't help us against the Arakudas because he's going to discard them. And we do not get 60 damage on, on the field. In one turn, we can spend maximum 40 if we have four orbital and a lot of switch cards out. So strategy now is to just spread damage. We want to get as much damage as possible on the Oricorio because we want to knock it out in late game. Oh, well, switch to the third orbital, get already 40 damage, attaching the grass energy and knocking out the first Cramorant. So he also needs a retreat card now, a Cramorant with double colorless and a lot of Arakuda. This definitely is a lot, so he's asking a lot to even attack us right now. He's obviously playing also double colorless energy, additionally to the water and lightning, I assume. Otherwise the build would be really slow, don't know what, what he would cut for this. Let's see what, what he can get this turn. Okay, going for the Denner here. Ordinary Rod, so you can back, get back Cremorants. Just the water and, okay, water energy as well. Okay, there's a the Cremorant. Now I can use Oricario's Tribute Dance. Okay, now he has a big hand size. Okay, also U turn board. Let's see how many Arakudas he can get out this turn. At least two, so which is 120. Okay, maybe a third one. Okay, they are also playing Lucky Egg. Gives them a fresh hand if their hand size is really low, but it is right now. So it had me, he's dealing 180. Now a Melodana would be nice because we 
just then back at 60 damage and there is no possibility for him to one shot our orbital Vmax. Unfortunately for us, we didn't get any. We need to retreat, but most likely I will hide between a Lily's Pokedor right now and use Bird Keeper. Attach an energy to defer it to another orbiter. Zero damage. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Maybe we can also hit one of our crushing hammers at some point. Removing his double colorless. Okay, now I think it's better to go for the orbital here. Okay, we have crushing hammers, we have everything. Let's see if we can get this out once again. Because as a supporter, he needs Nessa. Without Nessa, he can't attack this turn. So his supporter for the turn will be Nessa, and then he also needs double colorless energy. Remorant and everything, which is still a lot. So that's why I'm going for the attack here. It would also have been possible to use Lily's Pokedol here, and he then needed boss. But I want to keep this for the late game. Now we can stamp him down to two. Maybe knocking out your recovery at some point. He still needs free Arakuda. For a knockout, also discarded free Nessa, also played free Nessa already. But the game is tougher than I thought. I thought it would be much easier to win. But it's it seems very consistent to me. I didn't expect this deck to be that consistent, to be honest. Also playing Turbo Patch, so a crazy list. But now we can deal 20, put the orbit with Vmax attack, and either attack or hide between Lily's Pokedol. Depends if you can hit Crushing Hammer heads, then it would this would be a good deal. Ah yes, because he is limited to two double colorless, and he can not attack, he also needs to get it back and we can stamp him down to two cards and slowly we can knock out the oricori on the danny on the bench and we just stay here and wait if it's going to knock out this pocket all that's fine that's totally fine but with just two cards throw double colors down Two ne three Nessas down, so there's a really low chance he's going for the knockout here. There's no price card for him. Let's check our stadium. We have one more stadium left. Discarding Cremorant. Let's see if there's a Crobat or Dudenna in the deck. Or if he's just going to use the stadium. Okay, he's going for the Coco. Okay, I think there was a misplay from our opponent. He should have discarded, uh, benched the, the Coco first, then used the Stadium to get one more card. So now he can't attack. We can spam the field once again and hide between a Lily's Pokedol and another Pokedol. Because we don't want to give him a fresh hand again. We want to spread damage on the benched Pokemon because this is our only way to win, I think. Right now, where we have time, he needs boss, he needs, if he has boss, he cannot use Nessa in the same turn, so we are safe. As long as he's not using Nessa in turn before that, and then we can also still play Marnie. He needs to get them out late, then from the deck, which are on the bottom. So I think the hiding option now is, is really good. This may actually work out pretty well right now. OK, 
Okay, we have no bird keepers left. He has one Cramorant left in the deck. Maybe he has one more Narrow Rod. But as long as he cannot use his Lucky Egg or activate his Lucky Egg, his hand size will stay relatively low. Okay, maybe now he's going for a Probat or the Dene. No, maybe it's not playing any. Maybe it's just using this one one line. Okay, he has research top deck. That's different now. But we have one more reset stamp. Maybe we'll also play Marnie. Okay, now he's going to get his Nessa back for late game. And that's why maybe we want to also play one tool scrapper because now we could have discarded both of the lucky eggs and maybe win the game that way. So two scrapper would be a good addition. To be honest, maybe I also cut the crushing hammer because I'm not sure if I need them in the deck. They are good against matchups like ADP or it can be good also against Eternatus to save a few more turns. Maybe win that way, but I'm not sure if that's the right play. So now we still have one more turn, definitely. We can now use again Orbital, spread damage, use switch. And then uh, hide between Lily's Pokedoll and next turn we start attacking. Maybe we can also get one more Lily's Pokedoll. He needs to get Nessa and either Pokemon Catcher heads for an attack or boss and then he cannot use Nessa and boss in the same turn. And his deck only has 15, he has only 15 cards available to him. Two of which we know are Nessa, at least. He's probably having more energy in the decks. At least one water, which he shuffled back. So I'm assuming he's playing only one or zero boss. The chances are really low to, to get a knockout right now. Another lucky egg. Hmm. I think maybe we can use this to our advantage right now. If we boss the Dene, we can deal 50. And later on, he needs to attach an energy to the Dene for, for retreat, but he cannot attack because he attached to the wrong Cremorant. So maybe I think the lucky egg on the Dene was a misplay. Because we can now put it to the active and he can't attack next turn. And I haven't seen any switch yet. So next turn it has 150. So next turn we can just knock it out by using Orbiter's ability. He's not getting any any cards from Lucky Egg because it's an ability and not an attack. That is also crucial. And he can only two shot our Pokemon and we can one shot everything. So I guess we can win this right now. That's definitely possible. We can also use Melodana if he's going to attack us with 240. We are going down to 120. Then he needs again Nessa and Boss, which is highly unlikely. So our chances of winning are rather high and his hand size is still low. Okay, so he has the Nessa and he also attached energy to the Cremorant on the bench. Okay. Oh, that's good. We got a Lily's Pokedor, so we can hide between it all again. Okay, there's the well played. And he scooped. Nice. So the deck really works good against this kind of decks. Now we are in the next game already. Let's see who goes first. Okay, so I can start. Hope we can get my Orbital and Snorlax out turn one. Our hand looks good. We can attach the U-turn board to the Orbital. We can bench our Lilith Pokedoll. We are up against the Mad Party. We're starting off with a Dedenna here. I'll probably go now for, for Snorlax. Checking the deck first with uh, Trophy Stadium is kind of the best before searching for cards that are not in the deck maybe. 
There's only one Snorlax, but it's here. We have three Orbital VMAX in total. There's, I need to select what I want to discard right now. I probably go for the switch here to keep me a supporter for later. Go for the Snorlax. Now I attach a U-turn board and to be draw up to seven cards with Snorlax and then let's see what they can do. If they will be able to knock out our Snorlax on turn one, this would be a very good setup. So the strategy is simple. They want to get as many Pokemon to discard as possible with the Mad Party attack, which is the Dedenne. Then they have also Mr. Galar Mr. Mime. That's the blue one here. Water Pokemon. And two more. So in total 16. So they are the first ones that were discarded right now. Bunnelby is another one that they will most likely attack right now. This is the only attacker they can use turn one because it's a basic. They will only use double colors energy or maybe triple acceleration for the stage one Pokemons. So the setup seems really good. They get two of the basics out. Good thing is they have only 30 HP. Oh, another discard of two more. Mad Party Pokemon. Another Quick Ball. Getting done another Mad Party Pokemon. Another Bundle Beat. Double Colorless. This works really good. So they have six already, which is 120. Not enough for a knockout. Luckily, we have at least one VMAX, so we can start dealing damage on the bench. And benching, we will then bench the, the second Orbital V. <clears throat> Sorry, the second Orbital V and evolve to the VMAX, which once is already in play. And probably hide between the Lily's Poké Doll. Hope they don't get boss order. But there is there is the knockout. Now let's get our VMAX. Use ability, attach energy as well. Finally, we got an energy. So we can also start attacking next turn, maybe. If we like to, we can also use Orbitus ability just to knock out the Pokemon, the Mad Party Pokemons in total, because they have only lower HP. Okay, so we didn't get any more Orbitus or Quick Ball, so we just hide between this Pokedoll. And try to get out one more Orbital VMAX at least, which we have in hand already. Comes Tool Scrapper, doesn't affect us if they don't play Marnie, which they usually don't in their deck. Only problem I could see now is if they can get boss order on our Orbital V and knock it out, then they just need three more prices and get a 2 hit KO and on our VMAX. Then we may be in trouble. But if they whiff boss this turn, and obviously they also need to get the KO, they have 8 Mad Party Pokemon, which is 160, they need 220, so they need 11 Pokemon, so 3 more. Let's see if they can pull this off right now. There is a Dedenne. Uh, okay, so still at 8. Okay, there is an Evolution Incense. So if he has boss now, it, it will be really hard to win the game. We can use a reset stamp and and try to get another one out, but definitely will be a hard game. If the whiff boss, I think we have a pretty good chance of winning. Now it's nine Pokemon, okay. Ten. So they have 10 Pokemons now with Mad Party, which is 200. Okay, if they can also just cut this one, then it's 220. Then they just need boss. Did they hit it? They have just eight cards left in the deck. Chances are high. They have boss, okay. Whew, we were lucky. They missed boss. So we can now use Orbital VMAX. Oh, great. Another little poke all. So we can hide again one turn and knock out the bundle B next turn easily. Just with Orbital. We max this ability. This is insane, this ability. I guess we will see this 
a lot later in this season and also in the future formats. I, I really like to play Orbital this way. I hope you enjoyed this video so far. Just le leave us a like and a comment below which other deck of Vivid Voltage with the new set you want to see, which one we should cover. Sometimes we are also streaming on Twitch on the same name that Weber Brothers. This are says me and my brother. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Let's get back to the game. Um, we are hiding between Lily's Pokedol and I'm debating if I should bench another Orbital VMAX now. Or we just say Orbital V. I, I don't need to because they need a two hit on the VMAX to so just keep it and thin out the deck a bit. Because next next turn the Bano B is knocked out and the others have already 50 damage on them and I will knock them out one turn later. Anyway, so the Lilith's Poké Doll here really put up a lot of work. This really helps a lot, so you cannot get damaged that easily. They need boss, they need the support of her turn. They cannot use Great Catcher because we're not a GX. I think I'm just going to to, to uh, switch on the Wemax can also bench this one, it doesn't matter right now because they need to attack two times in a row anyway and they can evolve again. I probably hide between the ladies poke it all after that and knock out the two stage ones and then they have just one evolution left because they discarded all their bundle bees. So they cannot attack this two turns after if they do not start uh, benching another basic which is just 30 HP so they really need a lot to even KO one of the Orbital VMAX right now okay just need to finish my turn correctly if I want to get another basic out or not nah, I think We'll leave it at that. Next time we have another. Next turn we have two another orbital Vmax, or we have another orbital Vmax with two twenty on board. Either this or that. If they can get boss again, obviously. Yeah, they have just one more attacker after the two that are of already fifty. So game is pretty much over. I think at this point we have one. And let's see if we can if we can pull something up in the end okay he can get boss back research okay he has uh, discarded his whole hand i guess there's no way back for him guys uh at this point thanks for watching join in next time next wednesday we have the next video so every we post every wednesday a new video on pokemon or dragon Ball super join in next time